What's up guys, this is Michael Harris and welcome to my photography channel. In this video, I'm going to show you all the lenses and cameras that I use to document the services at my church. Now, the bag that I use is this bag right here. It's got pockets in there, it zips up, has other pockets inside like this. All right, that's enough of that. If you don't have a camera bag, there are some that are sold between 60 bucks and $120, just depending on what your budget is and of course how many slots and pockets that you need. Me personally, with all the gear that I have, I find it very valuable to have an actual camera bag so I don't have to, you know, carry all my stuff like this and just waltz it to church. Without further ado, let's just dive into what I got. So if you have watched my introduction video, you know that I'm a hardcore Nikon guy. All of my gear is Nikon. Back when I was in college, around 2011, 2012, my parents bought me my first ever camera, which was the Nikon D7000. Back then, I think it actually was just Nikon and Canon being the top brands. I'm not, I don't remember if Sony was in the picture by then. So my parents were actually the ones that got me to Nikon, and I'm actually very grateful for that because I love Nikon gear and I went on from that D7000 to my next camera which was the Nikon D750 to now which is my current camera the Nikon Z6. I have two of these camera bodies the one in my hand and of course the other one that's filming this video. Now what I love about this camera is that it's super small super lightweight but it's got a lot of focus points it's got great dynamic range it works phenomenal in low light the autofocus system is pretty sharp and accurate it's got great video modes and truth be told if I was given a choice to shoot Sony, Canon, and Nikon again, I would choose Nikon again because the Z6 is that beast of a camera. Now going on to the lenses that I have, I want to show you guys the first lens, which is the Nikon 50mm 1.8 lens. If you want to get started into photography, this is regarded as probably one of the best lenses to purchase right off the gate. Being at 50 millimeters, it's the closest lens focal length that shows whatever the human eye sees. If you were to take a photograph of somebody, you can get that nice visual of the person being in focus and a nice blurred background right off the gate and it automatically elevates you from just looking like a beginner to at least a mid-level photographer. I use this lens pretty much almost every single Sunday and especially for altar call photos if there's enough space between people this is one of my go-to lenses and I don't see this lens leaving my bag anytime soon. Now for my next lens is the 85mm 1.8. The 85mm, just like the 50, is another prime lens. If you don't know what a prime lens is, it's basically you just have one focal length and you can't zoom in or out. And the only way that you can get closer or further away from a subject is if you moved your feet around. But I like that. I like prime lenses. People might think that it's inconvenient, but honestly, if you shoot with prime lenses first, it actually makes you a better photographer because you literally have to think on your feet. With it being an 85 millimeter lens, it gives me a nice distance between me and my subject so I don't have to be all up in their faces. It's super sharp, handles very well in low light. And on my two cameras, I usually use the 85 millimeter in combination with this next lens. So the next lens that I pair up with my 85mm usually is the 35mm 1.8, which is ironically the lens that's filming this video right now. I like its wide aperture, it's very sharp, and it's the lens that I pretty much use almost all the time for autocall photos. My 50mm and my 85 just don't cut it sometimes, simply for the fact that there could just be way too many people crowding the space. And for that, the 35 millimeter is perfect because it's super wide and I can fit more people in autocall photos, especially when it gets really crowded. All right, let's get to the big guns. Now my first telephoto lens would be the 24 to 70 2.8. Now I said before that I normally use prime lenses and that on my two cameras, I usually use the 35 and the 85, but if I'm just shooting with one camera for the day, I'm usually shooting with the 24 to 70 for the simple reason because it's just so versatile. You can go from a wide 24 millimeters all the way up to a 70 millimeter, no problem. I can get the width of almost the entire platform and I can just zoom in like that and just capture a praise singer in, in like a quick millisecond. Now the downside is, is that it is bigger and heavier than the 85. But if you want that flexibility and you have the budget, I would always recommend the 24 to 70. Now the next lens that I use is the 14 to 24 2.8. This lens can go super wide and has come in clutch for me multiple times. But I've normally used this lens to get ultra wide shots of the church. And I use it mainly when I try to be more creative or get a different perspective that we don't normally get. And this thing delivers every time. These wide angle lenses are usually really expensive, but once again, if you think it's worth it for you and you have the budget, I say go for it. All right, so my final lens that I use is the 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8. I don't use this lens that often, but every time that I have, this thing is a beast. If you were shooting the 70 to 200 on one camera and the 24 to 70 on another camera, 
you're pretty much set for the day. This thing can zoom from the pulpit all the way to the back of the church, no problem. That being said, this will probably be the most expensive lens you'll buy out of the entire bunch. But say if you have a church play coming up or a church concert coming up, this thing will come through for you every time. All right, so that's it for my lenses and cameras, but I actually have one piece of gear left that I wanna show you guys. And that is this guy right here. It's the Flashpoint Explore 600 High Speed Sync Flash. Now I don't use flash photography during church services. I happen to like the lights that our church has. I like the purples, blues, teals, all those things. And the flash would just disrupt all those colors. So what I mainly use it for is for outside stuff or if I wanna take portraits of people. Flashes come super handy if you wanna have more moody type of shots. And it's super helpful if your church ends at 12 noon like ours does. And this flash will come super handy during that time getting rid of all those shadow eye bags that you would get during that time. There are some cheaper high speed sync flash brands that go between about 250 to the higher ones at about 600, 800. But this is definitely worth the investment if you wanna be more creative with your photographs. All right, and that's it for all of my gear. I really hope that you enjoyed that and hopefully learned a thing or two as to what kind of lenses you actually need. Only you know how big or small your church is. If you have a church of 40 people, you probably don't need this big old zoom lens. But if your church is about 100 to maybe 400, then yeah, go for it. In my personal experience, I feel that the 85 and the 24 to 70 are probably the most ideal lenses that you'll need for most churches. And honestly, don't think that you should buy all this kind of gear right now. Just start small, just purchase whatever you can afford. Take your time choosing what brand you wanna be a part of. Sony, Nikon, Canon, nowadays, it doesn't even matter. They're all fantastic brands. But the goal for you is just to get started. And with that being said, that's all I have for you guys here today. And if you're a church photographer, I would love to see your images. I would love to see what you guys are producing. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video.